Nestled within the charming embrace of Meadowbrook, a town that seemed frozen in time with its picturesque houses adorned with picket fences and meticulously manicured lawns, there flourished a neighborhood that stood as a testament to a unique and tranquil way of life. This idyllic enclave, unlike any other in the town, bore the distinctive mark of independence and freedom from the constraining grip of a homeowners association, HOA. In Meadowbrook Heights, where the sun painted the skies with warm hues and the fragrance of blooming flowers lingered in the air, residents reveled in the absence of the typical rules and regulations that often accompanied such close-knit communities. Amidst the backdrop of this serene oasis, there emerged a character who, unbeknownst to the rest of the residents, fancied herself as the unofficial arbiter of the neighborhood's affairs. Her name was Karen, and she carried herself with an air of authority that seemed incongruous in a place that prided itself on its autonomy. Karen's domain extended beyond the boundaries of her own property, as she sought to enforce her vision of order upon her neighbors. The absence of an HOA was, to her, an oversight that needed correcting. However, the residents of Meadowbrook Heights, accustomed to the unbridled freedom that defined their community, were not easily swayed by Karen's attempts at imposing her will. As the sun set behind the rolling hills, casting long shadows on the tranquil streets, the neighborhood's unique charm and the resident's sense of unity remained unyielding in the face of Karen's perceived authority. In this tale of a quaint town and an even quainter neighborhood, the clash between individual freedom and one resident's desire for control set the stage for a drama that unfolded amidst the charming houses and picket fences of Meadowbrook Heights. Perched at the terminus of Primrose Lane, Karen's abode stood as a pristine, two-story sanctuary that seemed to assert its dominance over the rest of the neighborhood. Her residence, an architectural gem, bore witness to meticulous upkeep and an exterior that radiated an aura of opulence. Karen, the reigning queen of Primrose, was a vision of calculated elegance, her hair meticulously coiffed, designer sunglasses perched imperiously on her nose, and an air of entitlement that hung around her like an invisible crown. In this quaint corner of suburbia, where the absence of a homeowner's association fostered an atmosphere of freedom, Karen emerged as an unexpected protagonist, or antagonist, depending on who you ask. Despite the liberated spirit of the neighborhood, she saw herself as the self-appointed guardian, a modern-day sentinel with a penchant for dictating the comings and goings of her neighbors. Her presence was an imposing force, her words akin to edicts as she determined who was allowed where and precisely when they could tread on her perceived domain. As the sunlight filtered through the grand oak trees that lined Primrose Lane, casting dappled shadows on the neatly manicured lawns, Karen's imposing figure seemed to cast an even longer shadow over the residents. The clash between her self-imposed authority and the neighborhood's desire for unbridled autonomy created a tension that simmered beneath the surface, turning the once harmonious streets into a stage for a drama that unfolded with every meticulously planned step Karen took along the prim, flower-lined lane. In her most recent quest, Karen embarked on a daring mission that sent shock waves through the neighborhood, an audacious decree that transformed the mundane act of package deliveries into a spectacle. The eccentric demand? Every delivery person, without exception, was instructed to deposit their parcels at the unmanned gate stationed boldly at the entrance of the community. Whether your residence graced the starting point of Primrose Lane or nestled in the secluded cul-de-sac at the utmost fringes, Karen's unwavering insistence held steadfast, no delivery trucks dared breach the sanctity of the entry gate. As Karen's eccentric behavior unfolded, neighbors couldn't help but exchange amused glances while reluctantly acquiescing to her whims in a bid to sidestep any potential clashes. Yet, with the relentless march of time, Karen's thirst for power morphed into a more ominous force. Her authority, once confined to the realm of quirky requests, now manifested in confrontations with delivery drivers, mail carriers, and even unsuspecting guests of residents. Karen, armed with an inflated sense of control, embarked on impromptu lectures, schooling all within earshot about her perceived dominion. The once eye-rolling amusement transformed into hushed conversations across the town, with Karen's name now synonymous with a less-than-flattering reputation. The climactic moment unfolded when Karen, fueled by her ever-increasing audacity, seized control during a critical medical emergency. On a tranquil evening, the wail of sirens pierced the air as an ambulance careened towards a residence on Magnolia Avenue. With urgency, paramedics darted inside to address a distressed resident, unaware that Karen, the orchestrator of neighborhood drama, 
was clandestinely lurking in the shadows. Little did they know, Karen was gearing up for her boldest move yet, ready to unleash a shocking twist in the unfolding saga. With an insufferable smirk etched across her face, Karen confidently sauntered towards the stationary ambulance, her every step exuding an aura of self-righteous satisfaction. Ignoring the pulsating urgency emanating from within the vehicle, she audaciously declared that emergency vehicles were unwelcome intruders in her neighborhood sanctuary. The paramedics, faces contorted with a bewildering mix of astonishment and exasperation, valiantly endeavored to initiate a dialogue with her, desperately underscoring the life-or-death nature of the situation unfolding within the ambulance. Undaunted by their impassioned pleas, Karen remained impervious to the ethical and moral imperative that demanded prioritizing a human life over her self-imposed neighborhood regulations. In this surreal tableau of conflicting principles, the unfolding drama presented a perplexing clash between compassion and unyielding authority. Karen's callous indifference to the sanctity of emergency response transformed the scene into a bizarre spectacle that left onlookers agape. The air crackled with tension as the confrontation played out, drawing an audience captivated by the unfolding dichotomy between a heartless adherence to perceived rules and the profound urgency of preserving a precious human life. The juxtaposition of obstinate authority against the backdrop of a dire medical emergency created a surreal tapestry of human behavior, leaving an indelible mark on the collective consciousness of the witnesses, who were now grappling with the unsettling realization that empathy and civic duty could be so callously cast aside. Callously disregarding the desperate pleas of the paramedics, Karen seized the opportune moment and swiftly propelled herself into the commanding embrace of the ambulance's driver's seat. In a brazen act of audacity, she defied the laws of empathy and compassion, callously dismissing the urgent needs of both the medical professionals and the critically ill patient. Before the stunned witnesses could summon the reflex to intervene, Karen, like a fleeting phantom of chaos, ignited the engine and accelerated away with a reckless abandon that mirrored the magnitude of her heartless actions. The echoes of the paramedic's disbelief lingered in the air, while the abandoned patient, left in the merciless wake of Karen's impulsive getaway, found themselves deprived of the crucial medical attention that hung precariously in the balance. The scene unfolded as a harrowing testament to the fragility of human decency, with Karen's actions etching a chilling narrative of callousness that would linger in the collective memory of those who bore witness to this shocking display of moral bankruptcy. The town was aghast at Karen's audacity. The community rallied together, determined to put an end to her reign of entitlement. The community rallied together, determined to put an end to her reign of entitlement. The indignant residents, incensed by Karen's blatant abuse of authority, mobilized with a newfound sense of purpose. The indignant residents, incensed by Karen's blatant abuse of authority, mobilized with a newfound sense of purpose. At the apex of this narrative of arrogance stood the infamous ambulance incident, an audacious act that would etch itself into the annals of their collective discontent. Fueling their resolve, the residents armed themselves not with pitchforks, but with the formidable weapon of undeniable evidence. Fueling their resolve, the residents armed themselves not with pitchforks, but with the formidable weapon of undeniable evidence. Fueling their resolve, the residents armed themselves not with pitchforks, but with the formidable weapon of undeniable evidence. Fueled by a sense of justice, the residents embarked on a legal odyssey, leveraging the power of the documented truth against Karen's arbitrary rule. Fueled by a sense of justice, the residents embarked on a legal odyssey, leveraging the power of the documented truth against Karen's arbitrary rule. As they prepared to confront Karen in the legal arena, the collective determination of the residents transformed their pursuit of justice into a gripping saga, one that would unravel the layers of an abuse of power and, in doing so, restore a semblance of order to their community. The local authorities were presented with the damning evidence, and they couldn't ignore the severity of Karen's actions. Charges were filed against her for theft, reckless endangerment, and obstruction of emergency services. The town collectively held its breath as justice began to unfold. Karen, accustomed to the unchallenged sway she wielded over the neighborhood, was jolted from her complacency when the stern presence of the police materialized at her doorstep. As cold metal handcuffs embraced her wrists, she found herself escorted unceremoniously out of her fortress of authority. In the face of this unexpected reckoning, Karen's facade of control shattered, giving way to tempestuous fits of rage that echoed through the once still air of her domain.
In her frenzied state, Karen desperately clung to the illusion of entitlement, vehemently insisting that she possessed an unassailable right to dictate the fate of the community. However, the town, weary and exasperated by the prolonged saga of Karen's high-handed antics, had finally reached the tipping point. The wheels of the legal system, long dormant in the face of her audacious behavior, were now set in relentless motion, poised to deliver the long-overdue consequences that she so extravagantly deserved. As Karen's indignant protests reverberated against the backdrop of her abrupt removal, the community exhaled a collective sigh of relief, anticipating the dawn of a new era free from the shackles of her tyrannical influence. The unfolding spectacle of justice finally catching up with Karen transformed the narrative into a riveting tale of accountability, as the town rallied behind the prospect of a future unburdened by the shadow of her domineering rule. As the case progressed, it became evident that Karen's sense of entitlement had blinded her to the consequences of her actions. The court found her guilty on all charges, and she was sentenced to jail time. The once mighty Karen, who had terrorized her neighbors, now found herself behind bars, facing the consequences of her delusional belief in her own supremacy. The neighborhood, free from Karen's tyranny, breathed a collective sigh of relief. The incident served as a lesson for everyone, reminding them of the importance of unity and standing up against injustice. The absence of an HOA did not mean an absence of responsibility and respect for others. The story of Meadowbrook became a cautionary tale in surrounding communities, illustrating the dangers of unchecked entitlement. The town rallied around the victimized family who had been denied emergency services, offering support and solidarity. Meadowbrook learned from its ordeal, and its residents emerged stronger, more united, and committed to ensuring that no one person could wield undue influence over their lives. As for Karen, she spent her time in jail reflecting on the consequences of her actions. The once-feared queen of Meadowbrook now faced the harsh reality of her own choices. The town moved on, leaving behind the dark chapter of Karen's reign and embracing a future where community, compassion, and common sense prevailed. We are looking for some feedback from our viewers. We have included the readable text in this story. Does that matter to you or would you just have us read the story instead and omit the text on the video? Reading the story out loud will always remain. Let us know what you think and thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. If you would like to see more of our original stories then please like and subscribe, and share and leave comments.